Okay, hello all you crazy people out there. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games, so let's make some games. Uh, this is a tower defense game, which I am making, which is about squashing bugs. Or doing something to bugs anyway. Um, it's been a few weeks since I've recorded one of these. And there have been a couple uh, updates to Game Maker uh, Studio 2.3 since, uh, since I last did that. So I'm just going to run it right now, just both so that you all can see where the state of this project is right now and so that I can see that it's uh, still working the was still working the way it was when I left off. Uh, perhaps there's a bug that I was depending on and has since been fixed or perhaps a new bug has been introduced. There are currently, what, eight bugs? That was a joke, I'm sorry. It looks like it's still working now. And I need to, uh, I need to look down at my notes to see what's going to be happening. Um, I have this week written down that I want to get to work on uh, placing towers and um, and that sort of thing. Right now, there are a couple towers created in the um, in the game world. Uh, those are all like predefined through code though, and they don't do anything anyway. Um, let me collapse that. This is the database setup. This is the wave definitions. Uh, a couple methods for sending in waves, an update function, a render, me uh, a render method. Um, these are the these are the two towers that I was um, that I had created through code, right? Yeah. If I comment those two lines out, the towers are gone. Uh, so now all all that I have to do is um, let's see. When the user clicks on a spot on the screen, I will be um, spawning something. So to get the location that the user um, clicks on the screen and to do something useful with that in a, uh, in a 3D world, uh, there is a script that I have talked about on occasion before. I think I have it in this project and I, and I can just like rip it out. No, it would be screen to world. Did I call it that? Screen to world. So this is the, uh, this is the screen to world script. Actually, that is the old screen to world script. Let me... Uh, Let me find the new one, the one that's uh, much simpler, much shorter, and uses matrices, as opposed to like the Game Maker Seven kind of code that you would have used before. Um, you know what? Do I even still have that project on my computer? Because that tutorial was a while ago, and I usually don't keep them around forever. I do not have World of Screen on my computer. Let me just uh, grab it off GitHub then. Hmm. Uh, world to screen, screen to world. Okay, this is the one that I want. Um, I will let Steam update, apparently. Sure, why not? Go do that, Steam. And let's go and create another script somewhere. Ooh, the gameplay folder got duplicated. The IDE is still having issues, I see. Let me do a... Do I have a math... Math. So I'm going to put my screen to world in here. I no longer need those Java, uh, JS doc comments. Um, I should probably leave the uh, leave the script credits at the top though. I no longer need these. And okay, uh, capital V is D mat and capital P is prod mat. We just use the good old find and replace. D mat, capital P, prod mat. That's view nat, not mat, as a matrix. Okay, so I cut that out because it was mostly tedious and not really any interesting game development work. Um, I'm looking to eliminate the amount of that in this uh, in this series. I've added the screen to world and the world to screen scripts to this uh, to this project as functions. I've cleaned them up a little and made them kind of 2.3-ish. Uh, instead of returning an array of values, it now they both now return vectors. And since screen to world also include the uh, camera origin, shut up phone out of the uh, out of the view matrix. I've kind of sort of made a mess out of the vector three function. By, uh, by giving it more than three components that you can use or not use if you want. Uh, you may find this abhorrent. 
if you don't like this, uh, you're free to make them a vector 2 or vector 3 or vector whatever you want. I just need a list of coordinates that I can access with a dot operator, so I don't really care what how many components each vector has. Uh, let me name that vector 3. That may or may not cause an issue if I try to use new on a script instead of on a, uh, on a constructor. I think that should be about it for these. And now I need to have a way to cast into the screen. Um, if I go to update, uh, for example, here, I can say, should I call it like screencast or raycast or something? Raycast might give people the wrong impression uh, that I'm doing like proper collision detection, so I don't know if I want to call it a raycast. Uh, it technically is, but words have uh, connotations that aren't necessarily the same as their uh, denotations, and I never thought I'd say that again after like sixth grade English class. Uh, so I'm just gonna call it. I'm just. I'm just gonna call it cast equals uh, screen to world. And. Actually, you know what? That might do better in the uh, in the camera update method because this is going to be dealing with the camera's matrices, and uh, the point of object-oriented programming is kind of to keep code contained within sections of of itself, uh, keep code contained within um their own groups, uh, their own objects. So I'll be doing it in here, and. Okay, you know what, let's call it mouse cast. Mouse cast equals screen to world. Uh, mouse cast is going to be initialized to undefined. Uh, by the way, the uh, the issue with uh, constructors in GameMaker Studio 2.3 has been fixed. These variables will now properly um, be assigned to these variables without any issues with like variable not set before reading it or whatever. Uh, so I just got rid of the underscores because I don't like the underscores because I think they're ugly and I like my code to look nice. Um, oh, that's going to give me a warning because currently GameMaker does not do super well with variadic functions. Okay, we can do this the long way. I really do not like the argument array. That should make the warning go at least uh, go away at least, right? Right. Okay, uh, where was I? That is in the uh, the entity constructor. I am looking for the uh, the camera constructor. So this is going to take a mouse x and mouse y, which for my purposes is just window mouse get x, window mouse get y, and it's also going to take the view and projection matrix, uh, which I could recalculate. I could also just uh, save these to variables. Let's see. View matrix is going to be that. Projection matrix is going to be that. And I'm going to initialize these to undefined also. It's not so much that creating a viewer projection matrix takes a lot of computational time. It's just a lot of code to write out. Um, if I were to type out this entire monstrosity every time I needed a v the current viewer projection matrix, I'd, uh, I'd start to go insane pretty quickly. Uh, so we'll just stick those in the, uh, in the correct arguments for the, for the screen to world script. And we now have a ray which, um, which represents where the mouse is going. Okay, if I were to show debug message this, let's see. Uh, let's see what it would be spitting out. Screw you. Okay, we got to. That was accidentally F one on the wrong thing. We've got to do this the even older way. I won't, I won't do the undefined check. I'll just... <sighs> I was really hoping we'd at least be able to get away from doing this in GameMaker Studio 2.3, but... I do not like the argument array, in case you can't tell. I much prefer having named arguments. 
Okay, it looks like it's working. Um, as I was saying, I'd much prefer have, having named arguments in the uh, in function calls than using the argument array. But for the sake of getting rid of this stupid code warning things, whatever. Anyway, it looks like it's working. X, Y, and Z are the components of the uh, the vector of the of the raid that's being cast into the screen, and A, B, and C are the the origin. Actually, A is kind of doing its own thing, but that's okay because I won't really be using that. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is get the point where this uh, where this ray is going to intersect the floor. And to do this, we can do a bit of geometry. So this mouse cast ray is going to be normalized with a distance of one, with a length of one um, across all three components. I've talked about normalized vectors before. And we want to, in a sense, keep repeating that ray until it um, until it hits the floor, until it's uh, until it travels down to the floor. And you can do this literally. You can literally put you can literally put some code in the loop and uh, keep traveling along that vector until the uh, the z position is less than or equal to zero. Or you could do some geometry. I'm going to save our m for let's say um, multiplications or something like that. There could be a better letter that you could use. Equals the um, camera dot from dot z divided by mouse cast dot z. If the camera's a, to make the math easy, let's say the camera is a hundred units in the air, and the um, the z component of the vector is negative one. You're looking straight down. A um, hundred divided by negative one is going to be negative hundred. M is going to be negative hundred. If the z component is instead, let's say, negative point one, so you're looking down at a slight angle, then um, 100 divided by negative 0.1 is going to be a negative 1,000. So you'll have to travel along this, um, do a 1,000 repetitions of this mouse cast vector before it reaches the ground. And then we'll just throw a negative sign in front of this, in front of this whole thing, because obviously we want um, a positive number instead of a negative one. Hey. Uh, what we'll also do, because we are dividing by a number which has the ability to be zero, is we will say, um, if mouse cast dot z is less than zero, we'll do all this. Otherwise, we'll just do something else. We'll set an undefined value for the uh, the point where the mouse intersects the floor. Um, obviously, if mouse cast dot z is equal to zero, uh, you're going to be dividing by zero here, and the result of m is going to be nan. And if the uh, if the z component of the mouse cast vector is greater than zero, then you will be looking up at the sky. And the point where the uh, the point where the line along your mouse cursor is looking uh, is going to be uh, somewhere behind the camera, which is not what you want. Okay. So the point where um, let's make a new variable. Let's call it floor intersect. Uh, this is going to be a vector three. Vector three, and it's going to um. It's going to con it's going to contain the point where the mouse vector does intersect the floor. Fortunately, this is a if you've been following along, you probably know what mathematical operations have to happen for this to to work. Uh, from dot x plus mouse cast dot x times m from dot y plus mouse cast dot y times m. And if you wanted to, you could do the same for z from dot z plus mouse cast dot z times m. And I think that would actually have to be negative instead. But um, this point, this coordinate is going to be zero anyway, because we already know that. We've uh, previously uh, decided on that. So let's create, let's create the floor intersect variable as an instance variable for the camera object. And if, uh, if mouse cast dot z is greater than or equal to zero, so if you're not ever going to intersect the floor by looking out from the camera towards the mouse, uh, we can say floor intersect equals undefined. Okay, so let's let's test that. Um, I'll go into the render. Uh, I'll go into the render method here. This is this is where uh, this is where everything's drawn. I'm going to take a, uh, let's say, a, let's look at included files. Uh, I'm just going to make a ball model, let's say, in model creator real quick. And 
It's going to be, uh, it's going to be nothing fancy. It's just going to be a ball. Model the crater, there we go. And let's give it a, let's give it a radius of, let's say, 8. Actually, I'll make it 16. So that it's a little bigger. Uh, just in case I, uh, have a hard time seeing it or something like that for any reason. Uh, we can make it a little more precise. It doesn't really matter. This is just going to be temporary art. If you can even call this art. Uh, triangulate, save as... And I'm going to go into, uh, where even is my, where even is this project folder? Game Maker Studio 2? No, this is the other Game Maker Studio 2 project folder that I have for reasons relating to it's complicated. Okay, this is going to be testball.d3d saved into the, uh, saved into the included files. We can load that. Let's see. What, what what was it? What did I call it? Load model. Test ball D three D. And what is the vertex format? Uh, the vertex format should be like the first thing that was defined, right? Okay, the camera's actually defined before the vertex format, and it really shouldn't be um, for exactly this reason. I don't like writing code where the, the order that you instantiate things is um, matters, but it's just game.format, right? Yeah, it's game.format, and we've loaded in the test ball, and we can vertex submit the test ball. Triangle list and no texture. So if this does everything that I want it to, it should uh, take issue with game.format. This is, this is what I'm talking about where I, I feel like the order shouldn't matter. The order that you define things shouldn't matter because then you get things like this. Okay, bad software engineering with, uh, with Michael the Wizard Dragon. Uh, I'm going to define this in, in the game object instead, in that case. Um, all right, I don't need, I don't need game.format there. Game.testball instead. All right. Spaghetti, spaghetti all over the place. Pick your favorite. So the test ball is always being drawn over there, and that's because I'm not actually transforming it. Right. So if floor intersect is not undefined, uh, we will be we will be doing that, and then you need to, of course, reset it when you're done. Okay. So here we have the test ball. It's being drawn at the mouse position on the screen. My mouse position is being recorded, right? My mouse position is being recorded. And uh, it's in world space rather than screen space, which is what we want. This took me longer to work out in this video than I really wanted to. I am a half hour into the recording. Um, and this was, I was hoping this was going to be done in like a matter of minutes. Although to be fair, there was a fair amount of screwing around. I had to get up and leave the computer for a few minutes uh, in the middle of that at some point. Okay, what is my next thing that I've written down? The benefit of putting this, uh, this notebook here on the floor is that it's off my desk and not like bumping into my hands. And the drawback is that I have to actually now bend down and pick it up when I wanna cross something off of it. Uh, Raycast into the screen to get the location of the tower hit. Or at least of the, uh, of the floor hit as it were. I've, I've made a note to try to do this in a single function call that can be replaced by a real 3D collision system later if needed. Uh, okay. Do I want to do that now? Not really. I don't really want to do that now. Okay, anyway, uh, when, I, when I click, 
And if this was a if this was a real object oriented language, I would make this a private variable or something like that instead of um with an with an accessor instead of a instead of just a public variable, but Gmail isn't quite cool enough to let me do that, so I'll just leave it. Um I can mimic that. I suppose if you really want to, uh, if you really want to drive home the OOP principles, you can do that. I might as well, I suppose. So next in the cameras, in the in the uh, game world, sorry, update method. If mouse check pressed, is it mouse check button pressed? There we go. MB left. Um, for the time being, uh, instead of bringing up a menu to select the tower that you're going to spawn in and checking to see if you have like enough money or whatever, uh, we can say camera.getfloor intersect. If that is not undefined, uh, then we will spawn a tower. Let's see, where is the tower spawning code? The tower spawning code is here. Uh, instead of at a hard-coded position. Position to X, Y, and Z. So now we'll be spawning something in, and it'll be, uh, it will be being added to the, uh, to the entity list, so it will be drawn and updated and everything. Okay. That's, uh, that's normal. How long can I go before the game starts to slow down? Hang on, let me, uh... I'll, I'll actually put that in the global code instead of in the um, in the constructor. Turn on the debug overlay. All right, so how many of these can I spend before bad things start to happen? Frame rate's holding up better than I expected it to. It's uh, I've got a decently good computer, but it's still 1,500 FPS or so, even with a couple dozen of these objects. Now we're down to, it looks like about 900-ish. All right, that's enough of that. It's uh, it's it's going pretty well. It gives me that gives me hope for um, for the future. Okay, uh, I have spawned in a tower. Um, what am I planning on doing on the next on the next video? The game loop tower damage win and lose. Okay, so that gives me a little bit of wiggle room. I do want to get some other things done here uh, related to gameplay. So let's um, let's let's have a currency. And I feel like I should separate player variables into a different struct instead of having them all in the game object, but that can be an organization task for later, I guess. Uh, let's, uh, I'll prefix them all with player, just, just, just for whatever the future date when I feel like um, organizing this better is. Uh, player money equals 500. And did I give a did I give a cost to each tower? I did. Okay. Unfortunately, there's no way to check that without instantiating one of these. Actually, yes, there is. Uh, these are the these are the template for the towers. I can check like towerpebbles.cost. Uh, so if if the position is a valid position. And I should probably check to see if something's in bounds or not, like built on top of each other or something like that. Uh, but I'll do that later. And player money is greater than or equal to. Instead of hard coding in tower pebbles, I'll do that. Uh, if you have enough money, if you have more than the amount of money, then uh. Than, than the tower cost variable. Then we'll do this. And uh, after that, of course, player money minus equals tower, really, 
paratype.cost. And I would like to uh, to actually see the amount of money I have. Actually, wait, I have, I, ha I gave myself 500 to start with and each of these costs like 10, so I'm gonna have to spam the button 50 times before that runs out. So instead I'm going to uh, make that 50. So I'll spam the button five times before that runs out. After that, let's, let's fire off the draw GUI event. And that's gonna do something similar here. I'm going to call that a GUI for the drug GUI event. And then uh, we'll simply, for now, draw text upper left and we'll just draw the player's uh, total money in the top of the screen. Okay, so I have 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, 0, and I cannot spam any more towers. Okay. Let's see. I should really be I should really be committing changes here. Um where is a uh, bombardier? This has really been a couple changes. Uh first, let's GitHub Desktop and and Git in general, but especially GitHub Desktop makes it easy. Uh allows you to separate files and commit multiple things at once or commit uh, one set of changes across multiple commits, which I find uh, quite helpful. So let's let's just take care of um, the UI method. And then we can then we can say that's not perfect because there were also things changed in this file, but I also um did other things in here as well. Let's see. This will be this will be getting the point on the screen where the uh, where the mouse intersects the floor. And lastly, spawn towers if you have enough money. Um, I think. Um, Believe it or not, I may leave this code here for like the actual game, uh, drawing the test ball. I may just replace it with something other than the text ball, the test ball. I may uh, make it like a, a target sign or something like that. That's a little, uh, that's a little up in the air. I can close this though. But either way, I'll leave that code there. As strange as it may look to have just a white ball floating around the floor under the mouse cursor. Okay. Uh, basic menu to let you spawn a tower. I don't know why I thought I would, I would be doing that in this video. The, uh, the user interface stuff is not, is not something I want to, to spend my time on now. I want to get the systems up and running first. All right, just to have a little bit of gameplay in this video though, I will have them shoot at things. So, tower update. Let's see. The rotating's a little weird, I'm gonna be honest, so I'm gonna get rid of that. And we can um we can get a list of all the entities, all the all the foe entities in the world. Uh where are the um there is a list of those, right? And send in wave wave current is uh, is looking for an update method. And when it spawns one in... Okay, so I'm going to separate this into two lists. I'm going to have a couple lists here. Uh, there's going to be, in addition to all entities, there's going to be all foes. Um, all entities is going to be like infrastructure, infrastructure stuff, infra oh my god infrastructure stuff. It's going to take care of um, anything that needs to be updated in every frame, everything that needs to be drawn, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, all foes is going to be specifically gameplay, so it's going to be um, when a tower looks for a foe to shoot. Um, 
Actually, that's a. Uh, it's going a little bit far. There's no real point in saving that to a variable. It's um. It's one single variable access. So it's not like it's going to be a. Uh, it's not like it's going to be slowing the game down or anything, and it's not even that much typing, so I won't bother. Uh, we're going to be checking each foe. Like this. And we're going to be saying if... Tower classes have, um... Let's see if I can open that back up here. Uh, gameplay. Database. I said, I said database, not game. Uh, tower types have a range, right? Yeah, range. So if point distance 3D and it's um it's position.x. Yeah. So if if the foe is closer than class dot range, then we will want to uh, we want we we'll, mm, we will want to shoot at the thing and then break out of the loop because we found something. Uh, this has this is a bit to do with tower targeting. Some tower defense games let you target let you set the targeting priority of uh, of foes. So that could be the far the one that's the farthest along the track, which is what this is going to be. Um, it could be the uh, it could be the foe that's physically nearest. It could be the foe that has the most HP or something. It's definitely possible that later on I'll uh, I'll write a little bit of code to allow the player to decide the uh, the targeting priority for each tower. For example, if you have a tower that does a lot of damage uh, but doesn't fire very often, you probably don't want them wasting their shots on the things in front that have just a little bit of HP. You probably want them uh, aiming at the the big scary things. But that is a that is a subject for another day, and okay, let's say target foe is undefined. Uh, if you find one within range, the first one, the one that's farthest along within range, you're going to set it to target foe, and then if target foe is truthy, as in not undefined, then we will fire at it. Uh, why did I close the model creator? I should make a uh, I should make a projectile model. Let's make a projectile model, uh, which is in fact going to be the same as the ball, but uh, let's make it scale down to like 0.25. So if this was a radius of 16, this is going to be a radius of a uh, Four. Okay, so we'll save that as um, test bullet.d3d. I don't think I actually need to. Um, I don't think I need to actually uh, wrap the file name in quotes when I want to save it with a different extension in Model Creator. Some some file selectors are picky about that and and like it when you do that. Some aren't. Uh, anyway. I know this is starting to run a little bit long, but uh, like I said, I do want to have a little bit of gameplay in this video. Um, this is going to be a big memory leak. I'm warning you right now. This is just, I'm just, this is one of the very, very temporary things that I'm going to write so that you can see something happening on the screen so that there's a little bit of a uh, progress in this video. Uh, this is, I'm going to be adding a new entity to represent bullets and it's going to take a few things. It's got its position, uh, rotation and scaling and whatever doesn't really matter. I don't really care about that. It's also going to have a vertex buffer. And that's going to be load model. And that's going to be testbullet.d3d and loaded with game.format. And it's going to have a render method, much like everything else. And it's going to, um, it's, 
going to look not too different from the other render methods I've written. Uh, however, it's just going to be the position. I don't really care about scaling or rotation or anything. So let's replace that with that. Actually, I don't even need a temporary variable right now, an intermediate variable. Instead of drawing class.model, we will draw class.vbuff. And it's going to have, it's also going to have a velocity, which I'm going to say is vx, vy, vz. Actually, you know, you know what? Might as well use vectors, right? And then the update method. And you'll note that the vertex buffer is instantiated every time a tower shoots and it's not destroyed. Uh, like I said, very much of a memory leak. Not super concerned with it right now though. And this is gonna be its own method later, but for the time being, a uh, new entity bullet is going to be starting at my position dot X, Y, Z to save time. Let's just copy and paste that in. I'll deal with the velocity in a minute. Uh, I would also like to DS list add it to the current, uh, to the entity list so that it is indeed updated and drawn. And um, we're gonna have them traveling at a certain speed. No, not even, I'll do that later. Um, hang on, the, the direction between the tower and the foe is gonna be point direction. I don't really care about 3D right now. I might implement point direction 3D later to give you a, a uh, I don't know, a quaternion or something, but We'll see if that's actually needed. That's the direction. And the um, X component of movement is going to be the degree cosine, not the degree sine of the direction. Y is going to be negative D sine of the direction and Z for now is gonna be zero. Is that everything? I think that's everything. Let's just multiply these by like four or something so that they're uh, actually traveling at a speed. That'll be unmagic number five later. All right, so let's spawn a tower here. Uh, let's send something in and we're going to see a steady stream of enemies of, of bullets, I should say. We are not, in fact, seeing a steady stream of bullets. Interesting. What is the tower range? The tower range is... Those are foes. These are the towers. Name, rate, and range. Okay, so that's... um. Those are like, I guess, cells or something. And I'll, I'll, I haven't even implemented fire rate yet. So like I said, this should be pretty, a pretty constant barrage of bullets here. There we go. So it's shooting at the nearest thing and the game is slowing, slowing down more and more as bullets are instantiated, but never, uh, never cleaned up. I think that works. Um, the game is, uh, the game is not having it. We are spending a lot of time rendering and a lot of time updating and a lot of time garbage collecting. Uh, so I'm gonna close this before anything, anything bad happens. Um, I'm going to commit these changes and I'm going to end this video finally because I've been sitting here for like an hour now. Uh, towers can shoot at foes. But nothing is ever deleted. Best to, uh, best to stipulate that. 
Um, let's see, what am I going to do in the next one of these? I just whacked my microphone with my book. I hope that didn't like blow anyone's ears out. If it did, I'll just I'll just mute it when I go to edit this video. Uh, next time, I want to actually do things with the game loop. I want to actually do things with towers damaging foes. Uh, I want to have a win and lose condition. Since I didn't do that now, I'm also going to next time implement uh, cooldown for tower shooting so that you can't just continu continuously fire once per frame. Uh, there will actually be the cooldown. And, um, and that sort of thing. I may go with, like, world building. Like, level design. Like, actually putting things in the game world other than just a checkerboard grid. Um, I've made a note that I kind of like the imagery of, like, ants crawling towards a picnic bas basket or something, so... Uh, maybe, maybe like, player health point will be food or something like that. We'll see. Um, it's highly likely that I will not get through all of these in a single video, and I will, uh, either drag it out for, like, far too long, like today, or just break it up over multiple weeks. Anyway, that's it. Code for this uh, is in the video description on GitHub, as usual. Uh, each uh, week is a separate release on the GitHub page. So you can view the state of the code at any uh, at any point in time, and if um, if you want to, you can look ahead to see what I'll be doing in the future as well. I've got a Patreon for these things, so if you want to contribute towards these videos being made, uh, there's a link to that in the video video description and in the end screen and whatever. Otherwise, my name is Michael. I try to do two of these a week, one of these and one tutorial tutorial. Um, I hope you found that interesting, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Edward Holt, Indie Punch, and Zenith for supporting these videos. If you want your name in the credits and to force me to pronounce them out loud at the end of every video, head over to the Patreon page in the video description and join the fun.